Hello Grade 12s and welcome to another video from the Answer Series. This is the fourth video in the chapter Work, Energy and Power. In this video we will find out how to calculate the net work done on an object. There are two ways in which you can calculate the net work. If we have an object with forces gravitational force, normal force, an applied force at an angle and a frictional force opposing the direction of motion from left to right, then each of those forces could do work on that object. We can calculate the amount of work done by each force separately and then we can add those works together. We get something which is known as the sum of works which provides us with the net work done on that object by those four forces during that motion. In the second method we would first find out the net force. Because the object is moving horizontally we can assume that the net force in the vertical direction is zero and so the net force acting on that object comprises just the component of the applied force in the horizontal direction plus the frictional force. We then take that net force and substitute it into the formula for net work to calculate the net work done. If we have an object on a horizontal plane moving from left to right with an applied force opposed by a frictional force at a constant velocity then the net force is zero. If the applied force is 50 newtons then the frictional force must also be 50 newtons but in the opposite direction to the left. Because the net force is zero when we substitute that value into the work formula we get a net work done of zero joules. We can also calculate the work done by each force separately. The 50 Newton applied force in the same direction as the motion gives us a positive amount of work done. The frictional force opposing the motion gives us a negative amount of work done. The sum of works when we add those two amounts of work together gives us a network of zero joules. If the object is moving vertically at a constant velocity the net force is once again zero. The gravitational force is 196 newtons downwards and so the applied force must be 196 newtons upwards. Again because of that net force being zero, when we substitute it into the work equation we get the net work on that object of zero joules. We can calculate the work done by each force separately. The gravitational force is acting in the opposite direction to the direction of motion and so gives us a negative amount of work done. The applied force is acting in the same direction as the direction of motion and gives us a positive amount of work done. The sum of works gives us a network of zero joules. If an object is moving at a constant velocity on an inclined plane we can have a look at what it means to be moving up the slope. The net force is zero which means that the net work done on that object is zero during the motion. The applied force is working in the same direction so does positive work. The friction opposes the motion and the gravitational force is also in the opposite direction doing negative work. The sum of works gives us a net work done on that object of zero joules. If that object is traveling down the slope the net force is still zero which gives us the net work done on the object of zero. This time 
the applied force is going in the opposite direction and so does negative work along with the frictional force whereas the gravitational force does positive work. The sum of works gives us a network of zero joules. Let's look at an example. Yako is trying to prevent this crate from accelerating too quickly. The implication of that is that there is actually a net force acting on this object down the slope. In the free body diagram, delta x acts down the slope with the four forces shown there. The applied force acts in the opposite direction to give us a negative amount of work done. The frictional force also acts in the opposite direction to give us a negative amount of work done. It's up to the parallel component of the gravitational force to give us some positive work. The mass multiplied by the gravitational acceleration times the sine of the angle of the slope gives us a, the magnitude of that force which when we substitute it into the work formula gives us a positive amount of work done. The sum of works when we add those three amounts of work together give us a net work on the object of plus 247,50 joules. If we go the alternative route of first calculating F net, then we need to choose a direction. Down the slope is positive here, which means that the gravitational force component parallel to the slope is positive, and the frictional force and the applied force are negative. The vector sum, F net, is 55 newtons down the slope. When we substitute that amount into the work formula, we get a network done on the object of 247,50 joules. It's now your turn to try these kinds of calculations. If you have the 3-in-1 study guide, you can try questions 1 and 3 on page 149 with the answers on page 167. From the 2-in-1 study guide is question 45 on page 11. Here we have a wheelchair moving up a ramp at constant velocity. Here are the questions that follow. Pause the video and try them for yourself. And then play the video again to compare your answers to the answers that follow. Here is a look at the answers. Because of that constant velocity, F net is zero, and therefore the net work on that object is zero joules. We can ignore the normal force because it's acting at 90 degrees to delta x. That leaves us with three amounts of work, which when we add them up together, give us the network done on that object. We know these quantities and the network is zero joules so when we substitute all of those numbers in there it is possible to calculate the work done by the applied force. Note that the parallel component of the gravitational force is mg sine alpha and that sine alpha is this fraction 1,5 over 10 which comes from the geometry of the situation. Here are the substitutions. The parallel component of the gravitational force is in the opposite direction to change in position as is the frictional force acting in the opposite direction and so both those amounts of work are negative and from the sum of works that gives us the work done by the applied force of 2264 joules. We can substitute that amount into the work formula 
and that will give us the final answer of the size of the applied force acting on that wheelchair. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.